Hola, buenos días. I uh, miss you guys so much. I'm glad that you're here for our clase de español. We are going to be learning something special this week because this week we are celebrating something. Celebramos algo muy especial. So let me show you what we're talking about. Of course, we have talked about los meses de el año, los meses. So we have enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo. You see that magic word right there, mayo. So if we're talking about los meses, enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, what's mayo? ¿Qué es mayo? Mayo is the month of May, exacto. So up here it says Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. So what are we talking about? Cinco de Mayo, exactly. Cinco de Mayo passed this week and it's a very special celebration. As you see, our beautiful colors, los muchos colores. You see me wearing some beautiful colores uh, from Guatemala. This is made in Guatemala. Um, and we know that Hispanics love beautiful, brilliant colors to celebrate their heritage. Um, and so this week we're talking about Cinco de Mayo. So there's lots of things to think about in Cinco de Mayo. You see beautiful pictures here again. We, on the top, you will see um, our vocabulary list, porque siempre estamos aprendiendo vocabulario. Tomatillos. Repeat after me. Tomatillos. One more time. Tomatillos. Tomatillos, right? And tomatillos, you're like, what are those? We talked about lots of comidas which is lots of food. Tomatillos is this picture here of what? What picture do we see? Tomates. Tomatillos are tomates, but instead of being rojo, and rojo means what? Rojo means red, right? So tomates rojos so are what we're used to here, but tomatillos are what um, a lot of Hispanics use, especially Mexicans, but lots of Hispanics use tomatillos for some special dishes. Tomatillos are uh, tomates verdes, tomates verdes, excelente. And yes, they taste excelente. Then we have another word, and you know this word, tortillas, tortillas. And tortillas are used in all kinds of food. We can use it for enchiladas, lots of different things. Next word we have in blanco, mariachi. Mariachi, what is it? Mariachi. Mariachi, we look at this picture down here, the photo, we have some children dressed up and they are dressed up like the mariachis. The mariachis are typically a group of people who play musica in la guitarra. They love to sing, cantar, and they love to play music in la guitarra. And we're gonna listen to some music in just a minute. And of course the girls like to dance and they have their beautiful vestidos, their beautiful dresses. The next word we have are here is Caracas. Caracas, we know what Caracas are. Caracas, as we see there in the picture as well, what are these? These are um, musical instruments that lots of countries use. I actually got mine from Guatemala, but there's in Mexico. This is another one I got in Guatemala. Of course, this is what we would call a rainmaker. But typically we use it because we like to make noise. So those are Caracas. Well, these are Caracas, the shape of the Caracas, or we call them Maracas. And then of course, here's another one, another beautiful rainmaker. And this one uh, used to have some, but Anyway, um, and they, with this one, actually, they would, hear the different sounds. Because it has a hole there in the middle. So, maracas, caracas, we use to make sounds for our music, for our melodies. Then we have carne asada. Carne asada. Mm, a mí me encanta carne asada, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, because carne asada, carne, carne means meat. Asada means you kind of fry it. So carne asada, like some fried steak. I'm sure you guys like that. I know I do too. 
The next word we have here is elote. Elote, en color amarillo, elote, you see this picture down here, elote is what? Exactly, it's corn. Elote is corn and a, a lot of Hispanics, Mexicans included, like to put a lot of different seasonings on their corn because you're like, what is that in that corn? It could be some salt, there can be some ranch dressing. I mean, there's some spices on there. So that's elote. And then we talked about enchiladas and we love enchiladas in my house. Sometimes you can make enchiladas con salsa roja, red sauce or con salsa verde, which is what you use with tomatillos. You crush up the tomatillos, this word right here, and you make salsa verde. And some people use that for their enchiladas, tortillas, um, and lots of different foods. So I just wanted to show you, give you some culture, and let's learn about Cinco de Mayo with this song. Cinco de Mayo by Emma Carlson Byrne. Illustrations by Geraldine Rodriguez. Music by Mark Oblinger. This of May we fly the flags that color green, red, and white. Remember Mexico's army and their great long ago fight. And so dance, let's play a song, it's Cinco de Mayo to say. Let's eat the food of Mexico, a suave tortilla, hooray! Because some of us might be asking ourselves, well, what does Cinco de Mayo mean? What, what are they talking about? What is Cinco de Mayo? So uh, we're going to have a friend here who's going to explain Cinco de Mayo and what it really means uh, for information, because sometimes some things get a little confused. Uh, we have a special holiday here in America called the 4th of July, and he's going to mention that. And 4th of the July is when we talk about our independence as Americans. But Cinco de Mayo, some people confuse that and think, is that the same thing? Is it or not? So let's listen to this and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Now I have to admit, I love to go out to a nice restaurant and have dinner with my family. Of course, when it's time to go out, we like to ask each other, where do we want to go? And we start talking back and forth until we find the perfect restaurant 
that everybody wants to eat at. I have to admit, I always ask to go out to my favorite Mexican restaurant. That's right. I love Mexican food, and I love the spices and the way the food tastes. So up next, I'd like to talk about one of my favorite holidays during the year, Cinco de Mayo. Many people know about the holiday across the United States and, of course, in Mexico. But right now, I want to share a few fun facts for kids and family about the celebration of Cinco de Mayo. Now, starting things off, if you don't know Spanish, that's okay, because I am here to tell you that Cinco de Mayo stands for the 5th of May. Okay. For example, in Mexico, did you know that Cinco de Mayo is a Mexican national holiday? The reason it is a national holiday is because Cinco de Mayo celebrates the victory of the Mexicans over the French in 1862 at the Battle of Puebla. In history, the battle began while Mexico tried to stop the French, who were given orders by Napoleon III to come and take over their country. Another interesting fact about this time in history is that the Mexican people were underdogs. And that's right, they were outmanned with only 4,000 soldiers during this battle. The Mexicans went up against 6,500 French soldiers and won the battle that day. This battle would continue on for over six years until the Mexican people were victorious. Speaking of holidays, one of my favorite holidays that is celebrated is the 4th of July. That's right, Independence Day is a huge part of the United States culture. But one thing about Independence Day from Mexico, it is it's commonly confused with Cinco de Mayo. Many people think that Cinco de Mayo represents Mexican Independence Day, but it does not. Cinco de Mayo is a celebration for the defeat of the French army at the Battle of Puebla. And Mexican Independence Day is celebrated each year on September 16th. Another big thing about Cinco de Mayo that Americans celebrate is the fact that if it weren't for the Mexican army defeating the French at the Battle of Puebla, the French would have taken over the region. This would have later been really bad during the Civil War because the French would have been able to help the Confederate Army who was fighting the Union to take over the United States. So the United States that we know of today would be completely different because instead of the Union winning, the Confederate Army may have stood a better chance of beating the North with the French's help. So now if you had to guess what city in Mexico really turns up for Cinco de Mayo throughout the country, it would of course be Puebla. It is one of the top spots for celebrating the holiday. But for your average Mexican in Mexico, Cinco de Mayo is not really celebrated like it is here in the United States. Now there in Puebla, Mexico, their celebrations aren't quite like what you would see here in the United States. For example, you might think that you're in the Wild West because when celebrating Cinco de Mayo in Puebla, Mexico, they like to wear costumes that look like they're dressing up for a Western movie. There is also sometimes a reenactment of the Mexicans' victory over the French troops that took place. Now, back here in the United States, the typical celebrations are like any other holiday. Of course, there is food, drinks, festivals, parades, and the music is brought to you by mariachi bands. Actually, the United States is the home to the largest Cinco de Mayo celebration in the world. That's right, it takes place in Los Angeles, California, and it's called Fiesta Broadway. Each year, Fiesta Broadway takes over the city of Los Angeles and draws close to half a million people to come down and party. Needless to say, I'm sure the city employees have a lot of work on their hands once this party is done. So with the victory of Puebla and the celebration of Cinco de Mayo becoming a tradition for many families, I hope you enjoyed these fun facts about the Cinco de Mayo holiday right here on Welcome to Fresno. All right, so as we saw, there were a couple of things that people get confused. People think Cinco de Mayo means the Independence Day, just like we have Fourth of July, but is that what is really happening? Oh, thank you for having your thinking caps on. Excelente. So as you see here on the left-hand side, it is celebrating a special battle. They were fighting, who were they fighting? Were they fighting the Americans? Were they fighting the Italians? Uh, or were they fighting the French? They were fighting the French. Good job. So they were fighting the French and they won. And the name of the city is called Puebla. Here it says, La Batalla de Puebla. La Batalla de Puebla, that's the city that they won back um, because they fought against the French. And so uh, he also talked about what day is Independence Day because we all have, every country has Independence Day. 
what day do Mexicans and Latin Americans really celebrate as Independence Day, but especially Mexico, because that's who we're talking about. And it um, also goes back to Hispanic Heritage Month. What month do we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month? September, you got it right there, September 16th. That's why we have Hispanic Heritage Month. And as you see here, there are some pictures of the Battle of Puebla or Batalla de Puebla. Lots of fighting going on. There's beautiful towers and churches getting destroyed and it's a messy thing. Um, but of course he talked about the biggest celebration is in Los Angeles. Isn't that interesting? So the biggest celebrations we have for Cinco de Mayo is here in the United States because a lot of um, Hispanics, especially Mexicans, are very proud of their heritage and proud of the things that they have accomplished. You see some beautiful dresses here. We saw children dressed like mariachis. Mariachis, remember those are those people who sing and, and, and juega la guitarra, uh, tocan la guitarra, excuse me. And so now we're going to move on to a little bit more information here. Let's see. Sorry guys, it's going just a little bit slow here. Cinco de Mayo. Oh. Okay. Okay, friends. So we are going to sing a song that a lot of you remember from in the beginning of the year for Hispanic Heritage Month. It's called Cinco de Mayo. So if you have some maracas at home, or caracas, get them, or some rainmakers, go ahead and get them so we can make lots of noise. Hey, guess what? You can even get some beans. Guess what? You can shake those and make some maracas. So pause the video, go get your beans, these are dried black beans, which we love to eat, uh, your caracas, and maracas, so that we can sing this song together. When you're ready, press play. Here we go. Remember we used to clap when we started this song. we're always showcasing our work that our friends do in our school so this is a shout out to some of our teachers and the sombreros that they made for hispanic heritage month 
So thank you for that beautiful artwork. And we always finish with Quédate en casa, which means stay home because we want you to stay safe. And I want to show you that teachers always teach from the heart because we love you and we want you to stay safe. So we're going to finish with this song. So get your dance on, however you want to do it. Quédate en casa. Consejo de la Organización Mundial de la Salud. Si no haces caso, allá tú. Quédate en casa. 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 No sentas, muchacha. Hay un río afuera. Que es un puerta caldera. Stay home, be safe, take care of yourself. So enjoy Cinco de Mayo, bendiciones, blessings to your home. Quédate en casa, love you guys so much. Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy, thinking and praying for y'all and enjoy yourselves and have a great time until next week. Adios. <laughs>